This is The Upper Room with Joe Kelly, and as we've been talking about all week long, we have international recording star and a great, great person and wonderful artist. She is currently on tour with Cher, and she is performing, I believe, in Portland, Oregon tonight, and we thank her so much for taking time out of her busy schedule, and we're not going to wait any longer. Cindy Lauper, how you doing, Cindy? Hey, how you doing? No, it's tomorrow night. But then Uh-oh. again, who will be there from Connecticut? Nobody. Okay. <laughs> Run right out and get on a plane. That's right. <laughs> so, so this tour, you started, uh, I believe, in June and yeah. going strong till December. How, how's, your, how's your voice and how, how are you keeping up pace-wise and, and what's the secret? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing my yoga. I actually did it today. I think I injured myself a little. It's always when I'm tired, you know, if you're, like, not in the right position and you do it, that's where you get injured. Or, you know, and I try not to stand on my head anymore because the standing on the head, you know, you fall over backwards. It's wrong. It's wrong. And I do my exercises. I try and do my vocal exercises, and that keeps me together. So it's all good, it's all. And, and the song we just heard, uh, It's Hard to Be Me. It is. It's so yeah. hard. It's so hard to be me. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know I, I've been listening to, to the CD, and I don't know if, if you'll agree with me, but it sounds like a great New York City record. I, I don't know if you, you, you're thinking that or... I know? wasn't thinking anything. Okay. I was just yeah. making music. <laughs> right, right. I, I could just imagine being down in the village and, and hearing you know, a song like that and... Of course, that's your background. So, how, how did how did you um, work with uh, William Whitman and Rob Hyman on that one? Well, actually, we wrote it in Connecticut. Um, hey. Rob came, and I put a studio in my house, and you know we went on, um, you know, Pro Tools, and I have a tape machine, so I do Pro Tools and tape. That was the CD was made like that. And like Shine, we went to a studio downtown in Tribeca and recorded the string section. And um, then we went, where else did I use? And we were at Pi Studios in Glen Cove, Long Island, which is one of the few studios that actually, when you listen to it in the studio and you take it out, it's the same. Um, And that's because... um, the guy, well, you know, it depends on your speakers, but pretty much the same. The guy um, who owns it, Perry, is like just neurotic with the sound. You know, he's like, he's a musician. Mm-hmm. He's a musician, and he's an engineer, so he's going to be neurotic about everything, and that's why I love him. I think, And I think that place is great. I wish it was closer, but hey, whatever. Right. It, it, you know? it, got, it got done, yeah. And, um, and George... Um, the guy who eng- who um, assisted Bill in engineering, um, he sang on Hard to Be Me, and he's in like one of those like shouting bands, mm-hmm. like a hardcore band. Hardcore. Yeah, right. And he was screaming in that with me, and it was kind of cool, you know. And we got a, a young guy from a band that was very popular, a new young band uh, that was playing Mini Moog, and um, and I just thought, that sounds really great. We should, you know, we all thought that would be great in the song. So we put that in the song, and it, it's kind of cool. <clears throat> you know, we um, tried to listen to the street a mm-hmm. little and put it in the record. And we should let our listeners know that uh, Shine is the title of the CD from Sydney Lauper, and you can go to a variety of sites, all, all available right by going to your website. Oh, yeah, you can yeah. get on Amazon.com or CindyLarpa.com, or you can go to Tower, Virgin, or Borders mm-hmm. and get it there, too. So so do you have plenty of songs in the vault? Oh, right? Warehouse Records has it, too, I think. Okay. And and, and, and starting the fall, Target, my favorite store. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Walmart and um, Kmart will have it. So, so that's a great way, great distribution there, yeah. It's ADA, babe. Right. It's good. So, so as far as having some songs for future release and, and getting the full length album, uh, mm-hmm. you're on tour. Is, are you working on a lot of stuff in soundcheck or you know in between? 
you know, shows? I haven't been able to do that because we're doing in-stores. We've been doing these acoustic in-stores, mm-hmm. and it's pretty fantastic. But then afterwards, I sign. So I actually, for me, it's kind of an extraordinary experience because I get to meet people, and I see them face-to-face, and I listen to the stories, and I listen to them you know, as best I can and try and get everybody because... Usually, you know, you can't write fast enough. Right. And I don't want to, you know, if you go to a store and you wait online, you want to get something. Sure. So I try and do it as fast as I can and, you know, and and listen. And, you know, (laughs) we get to the point where it's like, okay, have your camera ready. What you want to sign? Don't mind my demeanor. I'm trying to get everybody and still get back to soundtrack. Okay. And, you know, so it was just a lot. A lot. Yeah, I can, I can imagine because I was on the other end, waiting six hours for Prince outside the the West Fourth in the Village Tower Records, and it's yeah, hard. It, it's got to be tough for you, just you know. And you want to get them done because mm-hmm. you want everybody to be, have something, you know. So, what do we do? We did like, have your camera ready, have you, and somebody takes your picture while I'm signing. We smile together. I finish signing. I give it to you. I shake your hand. I say, hey. <laughs> Have a nice life and <laughs> tell your story walking. No, not really. <laughs> they always tell me that. You know, I start right. talking and the poor road manager is like there with the heart medicine. He's going, eh, tell your story walking. You got two minutes, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> so who, whose idea was it to do the uh, acoustic set with the band? Well, the guy from Borders came to see me live. And then I, we were talking. And then he talked about doing an acoustic or doing this, you know, playing. And I said, oh, my gosh, we could do that. I said, that would be a lot of fun. Let's do it. If we're going to do it, let's do it. And it's everything I was never able to do. You know, everything. Like, I would have to do in stores where I just signed, but I could never have the band. And then one time I had the band, it was a big brouhaha, and it was all big. And now I'm on tour anyway, so I could do it with the band. And not only that... But I'm doing, uh, I'm, I, I, I go and I do these club dates. I try and do, you know, like I was always told, what do you know, a dance diva? You know, that's dance music, you know. What is that? It'll never take off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they always hire the rocket scientists. Why? Right. Why do they hire the rocket scientists all the time right. for these companies? And so, um. You know, now everything's got to be dance. No, you know, it's like, but for me, I kept one foot in the clubs, and it was really great because I was able to experience all the things I've never been able to. Um, I can, I can sing to my shirtless boys and my boyish girls, and I can show up in a macaroni crown riding a horse, and that would be just acceptable and fine. You know, right. and it's great. And and um, this illicit shine mix was the stuff, the, the, you know, part of what they were playing already. And the songs on the EP um, was fan-driven because it was supposed to come out on Adele. It didn't. Then I started writing some more. Um, and I was performing live while I was looking for a new home because I didn't just want any old label. And I started to sing live, and the people started to sing the stuff that was going to be released on the Shine CD. And it got louder and louder as they went on. And then I played a festival, and they were like, you know, festivals are big. There's you like 20,000 people, and there were 20,000 people standing there singing Madonna Whore back at me. And I was like, at first, I was like, yeah. I was I was a little stunned, uh-huh. as was this other woman in the crowd, and she had like a preteen girl, and she was wondering whether it was a good song for her girl to hear, and I had thought strong about if it was or not um, before I sang it, but I thought it was a good thing for them to know uh, every woman is uh, uh, every woman's a Madonna, every woman's a whore. You can try and reduce me, but I'm so much more. I thought that was a good thing for a kid to sing, and uh, especially going into the way everything is advertised and the way mm-hmm. they do everything. And then they wonder, what's wrong with these kids today? What do you think is wrong? What do you think you're doing in advertisements, you idiots? 
Yeah. You know, yeah. who's the rocket scientist? Okay, what's wrong with everyone? I don't know. Think about it. <laughs> Duh. And so, um, uh, so I just, um, I was, you know, I, I, I looked at her, and then she was looking around because it was so loud, and she knew she never heard it on the radio, and neither did I. And in a way, it was really inspiring to me because you could hear whatever you want from the suits mm -hmm. and the gatekeepers, but when the voice of the people shout back at you that loud it's inspiring and it's invigorating because all of a sudden you know that you are being heard and people want to hear it and it is catchy to them to the people it may not be catchy to the gatekeepers but what do they know anyway and it'd be somebody different next year saying no same thing you know it's all, mm -hmm. all the same you know because it's the Enron guys, you know, <laughs> and they're only looking, they're only watching the stock market. They don't listen to music, you know. So, um, anyway, so I, I, uh, I thought it would be a great thing to do um, to release this EP with the songs that they were singing the loudest on. And, you know, it just so happened that my manager was walking down the block, uh, the share thing came up, and, you know, uh, or had... She was doing business meetings about that, and she met some old friend who now was doing something at ADDA Distribution, and they're through Warner Brothers, and they heard about the EP and the tour, and they were very excited, and one thing led to another, and now I got the, I'm on Olio, on ADA, I'm being distributed like crazy, mm -hmm. and the CD, the, 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 the CD is doing wildly well. And, I mean, it's out uh, just for a short time, and it's doing well. And I'm, I, I feel so grateful, and I'm so glad to be able to give something back that's affordable, and that uh, people could have. And I do try and take great care in what I do put out. I try, you know, so that it has a quality to it, you know. And I, I didn't want to just have a hit record. I want to have a hit record that meant something to people, mm -hmm. and um, and I can see that that really does mean not something not just to me, but to other people too. So that's a great experience that I'm having, and of course I'm having this experience with Cat, and I played on the Deadly Sins tour with her, and you know. When we were doing the Sisters of Avalon CD, we had such high hopes, and of course they were dashed, and no one ever heard it, and it was never, in, or it was in the stores, but you never heard it, and you knew, never knew it was out, and you know, so there wasn't much I could do. I was pregnant, and so now it's kind of a wonderful thing to see it come back and know that it was heard, and and all, it was all heard. It's just not heard in the traditional sources. But that's okay, and my path is just different and quite extraordinary, because I always tell we tell our son this: you gotta be awake and alert and look around you and notice things, because if you're not looking, you might miss something really great. And I happen to wake up and open my eyes and hear the voice of the people at me, and that was inspiring, and it was nurturing to me. So it enabled me to stand up and say, yeah, okay, right on. Power to the people. Right. I'm with you. Okay. I'm here. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Ooh. I'm awake. I'm coming. <laughs> you know, and and so I, I've been privileged. And, of course, Cher is a huge supporter and and requested me for her final tour and requested me for her duet in Divas and flew me out herself. Wow. So it, so it seems like uh, you've hit in just about every major city in North America and the U.S. a couple mm -hmm. times around. How, how about as far as are there, are there certain spots in the U.S. that are Cindy Lauper cities and strongholds that you go there and every time they're showing you the love? I don't know. I think there are 
I have favorite cities, but everybody's different. Mm -hmm. And I always listen to them, and then I work them, and I whip them. I whip them up into an uproar. <laughs> I kick their butt. Right. <laughs> I get them going, and I see, you know. And I just try and find my joy and and make a little um, ruckus. And the crowds get louder and louder. And so I'm having a good time. But everyone is different, and every place is different. And that's the beauty of it. Because even though it's not the whole town or city, you get a little flavor of who these people are and what they're like and if they're rowdy or if they're not or if they're vocal or if they're not vocal or if they're sweet and shy or, you know, whatever they are. You know, it, there's um, a personality of each audience. So, Well, we're going to give our... Oh, sorry to cut you off. Sorry. No, it's okay. I don't care. <laughs> I, I will talk into the ground. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was going to say we're going to give our listeners uh, a great taste of uh, what is on the CD, Shine? We'll go with the, the title track. Shine, written by yourself and your bassist, William Whitman. And uh, Actually, you know who he is? Bill Whitman is the guy that um, was the associate producer on She's So Unusual and recorded and mixed all of it. Oh, okay, wow. And um, he even wrote the Lindrum part for Time After Time. The, he still has the Lindrum, or has he thrown it out? No, are you kidding? Yeah. He saved the Lindrum. <laughs> He saved that Lindrum, right. God bless him. And um, then um, we did work together. We didn't work on True Colors. Mm -hmm. And we didn't work on A Night to Forget. Remember, but I'd like to forget. No, but it was okay. It was good, but it wasn't. You know, um, it just goes to show you, you want to compromise, but I compromised so much that nobody got what they wanted. And it, it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, it, it, it was a moment in time of confusion and disillusionment and and trying to find my joy. But now, um, when, when I went and did Half Full of Stars, I, I met everybody again, met up with them again. Started right with Rob and Eric. I saw Bill. Um, we became friends again and realized that the business and our business partners had made such a rift between us that we lost touch, and that was a shame. Because these are these were my guys. These were right. um, my people that I made music with, and and we did this this grand thing together. So it was good that we got back together, and we did have full of stars. And then I brought Junior Vasquez in, and I had a blast with Junior. Oh, Junior made me laugh so hard, and and so did Rob, and so did Eric, and so did Bill, and. Then I worked with Bill a little on Unhook the Star. Well, Unhook the Stars, Bill recorded and mixed. And I recorded some of that in my home. And then um, uh, Sisters of Av that was on Sisters of Avalon. And then we hooked up with Mark Saunders. But we recorded a lot of that in my house. And then overdubbed on top of that in the, um, in the studio. And some of that we did live, like, Sisters of Avalon itself, we did live in the house. And um, then um, I also did uh, the Christmas album with Bill when I tried to get off Sony, and then finally I could get off if I did the Christmas record. So that was the one called Merry Christmas, Have a Nice Life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I really did always want to make a Christmas record, so... I gotta commend you on your on your website. Um, who who are the people? That's John that Mark. Okay, that that's a great John website. Mark. Yeah. John Mark is great, and yeah. John Mark has been doing it for years. And then finally, I just said, you know, just let John Mark do it because he's doing such a great job. So we just did, you know, and and he's a good guy, and he works really hard, and it's all good. All right. I'm, I'm lucky. I'm a lucky bear. Yeah. Allows you to co uh, focus on, on touring. and. Hey, yeah. I mean, when I was home and I didn't have a kid and I was just pregnant, I, could, I wrote a lot. I did a lot of stuff. I wrote a journal. I wrote stories. Now it's harder. The only thing I want to get back to is I brought some stuff with me. I'm supposed to finish lyrics on that I want to do. And I want to get back to that. I don't know when, <laughs> but right. sometime. Right. You know, 
and I want to practice on my dulcimer because I know so many people just love that dulcimer. Now, I'm only kidding. Everybody always says, what is that you're playing? Why you got to play that thing? What's the matter with you? Why can't you just sing? What's wrong? <laughs> it's just the business people are always <laughs> like looking at me like, what is that? <laughs> what is she doing now? <laughs> and why? <laughs> hey, but you're having fun. and that's, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, girl, as yeah. girls just want to, you know. <laughs> That's right. Hey, listen, I got, I, you know, a little little uh, question about ha- have uh, what's the possibility of recouping all, all the money from, from the song uh, Girls Just Want to Have Fun being played at every wedding reception and stuff like that. I, I'm a DJ myself on the side. And oh, you know what? It's, it's strong. Oh, let it yeah. go. Yeah, right? Let it go. No, I, I was kidding about picking up the money, but it, it's just such a powerful It'll it was a great that, message, yeah, yeah. and it was great to be part of that. And, you know, obviously it's different from Robert Hazard's because he's a guy, and what he wrote was different. Mm-hmm. And if they had me sing what he wrote, I would have been, I kept saying, and what shall I do, just get a lobotomy? You know, <laughs> it's like, so So then I, I kind of, you know, Rick Chardiff said, well, think of what it could mean. So I said, okay. And then I decided, okay. Let's make a feminist anthem mm-hmm. and and involve all the races as opposed to just right. the white people, you know, which is all they had on MTV was like white people in one video, black people in another video, and far and few between or in between, you know. So I thought, gosh, let's mix it up. and <clears throat> And I thought, you know, if I have... All the girls having fun. Why well, then it would speak to all of us. And if I had my mom, right, it would mean and bring the generations closer. And we talked about that. And so when she did the video, it kind of did that. But it was also great for me because it allowed us to play together in a way that we never played together when we were little, when I was little. Mm-hmm. And her, too, I guess, right. you know, because she had us when she was young. How about for, uh, you know, since you're such an important part of the video age back in the 80s, is it mm-hmm. as important, do you think, as an artist these days coming up for videos? or? Well, uh, your videos don't really get played unless you're on Top 40 Radio, and that costs money. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> so I think visuals are important, and there's always ways to do visuals. So... You know, I try and keep that in mind. And if you have time, it's always a good thing to do. So, uh, but that's, what, that's right. you know, basically uh, what I've been trying to do. Uh, a friend of mine wanted me to uh, thank you for all the MS work you've done in the past. Oh, well, you know, yeah, he, he, it was a good thing yeah. to do, and mm-hmm. Captain Lou was involved with it, and he felt very passionate about it. And as I started to get involved, I understood why. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really something. And actually, one of the girls that was in the video got MS. Right. The girls just want to have fun, which, so it's kind of... Oh, yeah. that, that always missed me, that, that disease. Well, you're currently on tour, and uh, how, how about off the top of your head, what, what is this upcoming week looking like as far as uh, tour-wise? Oh, tomorrow will be a hard day. Tomorrow I go to a television station, mm-hmm. then I do an in-store. We sing acoustically, and I sign, and then I go and do a gig that night. Whoa. Yeah, that's a yeah. hard day. And, and the band, your your band members, you were always pride yourself on having great bands and including females in your band. Are and you kidding me? Yeah. Girls got to have fun. That's right, yeah. Right? If you could talk briefly about who you have in the crew you're playing with now. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, Bill Whitman, obviously. He, he's playing bass now. You know, you probably know his work from Too Much Joy. How, do you? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so, you know, I was always miffed when I wanted to work with him and he went off to be in a band. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> but, you know, he loves it. And um, so he's playing with us. Sammy Marandino is playing with us. And there were two guys in the um, 80s and 90s that did the loops and it was Sammy Marandino and Jimmy Braylow 
either went to one or the other. Jimmy became a red coat and is now working in A and R. Okay, <laughs> but, that's um, the term. <laughs> uh, the um, uh, but Sammy's playing and playing strong, and he's uh, he's in my band, and he also was on this Shine CD. That's when I met him. We did the Shine CD together, and um, he played loops and drums, and um, I got Allison Cornell on. Um, violin. She plays some keyboards. Um, she's fantastic. She is fantastic. She went to Juilliard. She is a wonderful player. She is a joy to work with. She's worked with everybody from Tracy Chapman to um, what's that one's name that married Mutt Lang? What's wrong with me? Uh, Shania Twain? That's it. Shania Twain to... Um, well, I know, you know, everybody. She worked with everybody. She works with Indies. She works with Indies, Audis. No, right. you know. Um, so uh, she's with us. And Steve Gabori, who was from the Blue Nile group, he's playing keyboards with us. And, um, and me and Kat. That's all of us. So a great group of musicians. and Wonderful yeah. group of musicians. And... And we have a great crew. And we got this really great sound man, Brad. Wait a minute. Chad? Oh, well. Uh-oh. I don't know Brad's last name, but he used to be a singer, too. Okay. And he was, But he did, like, the heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just almost sounds like Metallica, but with some funk and tight and wow. really some deep-ass funny lyric, you know. And, and the, but he stopped, and he's doing sound. So I don't know. So and especially for an arena, you're playing mostly arenas of bigger rooms. That all the more important, right, to have him there. Yeah, yeah, he's great, and he does the in stores with us. It's great. Mm-hmm. I I'm having some wonderful experiences. I always remember the notes that the musicians play, and I always will, and I'll always remember the different roar or applause from the crowds and yeah. I always hold these images very dear because it's it's very inspiring and there's some wonderful rhythms and things that the bands play behind you and I feel that I am able to live an extraordinary life to be able to be in front of them and hear it and sing to it and add to it you know, so it's kind of great. How, how about touring, great. touring across the U.S., radio or CDs? What do you mean? Uh, uh, when you're touring, you, you listen to radio or CDs? Oh, I listen to CDs, CDs or satellite yeah. radio. Okay. They don't have, you know, it in any one place. Right. I mean, I guess if you could find the music at the end of the dial, yeah. it's good, you know? That's where we're we're at, so... Yeah. I know, well, music ba- from the end of the yeah, dial. Yeah, right. Well, when when you're back that. in New York City, you'll have to, to, have to come to up here. It. Yeah, you, and uh, you went to uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, which is my hometown. It was and, a tonic, uh, baby. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I was a guest speaker. Right. Yes. Um, I My brother-in-law, Dr. Robert Thornton, we call him Rab. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's his name, though, Rab Thornton. Okay. Um, Or maybe it's Robert, I don't know. But um, he's uh, he works over at um, at Housatonic. I think he works under the president of the college in maybe admissions or acquiring grants for the school or something. Um, but he's a doctor, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's a PhD. <laughs> and of course, he he asked if I would go and speak. Not that I know how to speak anything but the Queen's English, and you know how impressive that can be. Um, but um, um, anyway. So, should I explain? Sure, go ahead. Okay, yeah, because okay. you missed that one; went right over your head. No, no, no. No, I'm from Queens, <laughs> New York. Oh, there which is the borough. You know what? I did miss it. And the Queens English. <laughs> in Queens is so different from across the pond, you know. Uh, so, 
Anyway, when, when I listen at home, it, it'll definitely hit me and, and make me seem foolish. <laughs> but no, you can go ahead. Um, no, that's yeah. that's it, and um, and it, it's a wonderful school, Housatonic. I mean, I, I I watch people get their diplomas, and there were mothers with kids cheering them on. There were grandmothers. There were people coming up on crutches, you know, getting that diploma, and. It didn't matter how long it took, they got that diploma. And I got to tell you, it was the most inspiring thing. It's a great college, and it has, um, it, it has some really great programs. So mm-hmm. I, I think mm-hmm. it, it was um, a wonderful experience to be part of. And since, since you just were there, they have a, a new, like, 10, I'd say 10,000-seat arena, which would be nice if they could book the, the shared Sydney Lauper double tour there. But uh, they had a ten thousand seat arena where in Bridgeport? Yeah, right, right down the block from. Uh, it's called Harbor Yard Arena, and it, wow. you know it's a. Uh, they have minor league hockey there. They have you know concerts and. That's right. They have. Who plays the hockey there? What's the uh, name of that? The the Islanders uh, minor league team. Yeah, it's called. Not not the Griffiths. That's for. No. What's it called? You know, I don't know the nickname of the team, and I'm a hockey fan too. No, it's not a nickname. It's their name. It's not a nickname because it's a a farm. Uh, yeah, it's a farm team. It's the Islanders farm team. Uh, you got me on that my one. My son knows it. Yeah. Yeah, my son's. Uh, he goes there. He likes hockey. I think it begins with an S. But yeah. Any, anyways, it'd be nice. All to right, look at us. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm a New York Ranger fan, so I don't know. Yeah, but, he is too. Yeah. yeah. He likes all of them, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I'm in Portland. Who plays in Portland? I don't think they have a major league team, but they, uh, they, they don't they, have a yeah. team, a hockey team here. Uh probably like a you know a minor league team, like a Port- farm. Team. Yeah, farm team. Yeah. Mm. So, so Portland, the Rose Arena, right? Mm. You, I yeah, guess that's yeah. the venue. That's yeah. right. And uh, you're going to be moving on. Uh, you just came back from Canada mm-hmm. and Vancouver. And mm-hmm. and, and then in- I'm going to go to, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know the, I don't know where the, I'm going. The, the, I'm going somewhere. <laughs> I'm going somewhere fast. The, and then the, I'll be in L.A. The, the best thing is to look at com, which has the entire, uh, from, from now until December, and when you come back, you know, you're working real. It's got to be the envy of a lot of musicians to be out there playing that often. So yeah, yeah, that's great. It's good. And uh, I, I gotta commend you. Keep, keep the independent thing going. Well, I do what yeah. I can. Yeah. Unless I find a home at a major with people who think right like musicians. Right. How, how about the the significant Rel- Rella Music? That's my uh, record. That's my company. Okay. So it's Rella slash Olio. Okay. And uh, I want to thank Cindy Lauper for stopping by the Upper Room with Joe Kelly on tour. All, All right. Always appreciative when, you know, you're calling in from the road. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> take care of yourself, hey, there, Joe. We're almost neighbors, so, you know, when, when you come back in 2003, you have to come up here to Connecticut again. All right. I got to go because I think I've told you my life story. Right. <laughs> I talked you into the ground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Cindy.